Okay, so I haven't been on for a while and I just tried to do a recording and it didn't work out. So hopefully this one will. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I was looking at Stellarium. We're actually going to read scriptures too quite a bit, but um, I know that a lot of people are getting very concerned about things that are happening, especially political intrigues that are happening around the world, also natural natural disasters and disasters that probably aren't natural, right? Um, that we're seeing occurring, that we're being told are natural. Um, and uh, I'm just hoping that these videos will bring peace and clarity um, through the Word of God um, to those that are waiting. So, going to Revelation chapter 12, um, so I'm in verse 4. 15, so the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. So at some point after she gives birth to this child, then Satan is going to become very angry. Um, he's described here as a dragon and he's going to spew a flood out. Now, is that literal waters? Probably not. Um, it's probably a flood of events um, uh, catastrophes, um, false information, all the things that he's been using now forever, and he just ramps up and it becomes bigger and bigger, right? Um, so a false alien agenda, I don't know, wh whatever it is, um, it's a flood, is the way it's described. So, um, now, remember when I show you things in Stellarium, it's because we have that scripture that there will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars, right? And then it goes on, perplexity of nations, so on and so forth. So, whether or not these are actual signs, I don't know. All I know is that my attention is called to um, things that I see, and I'm sharing it, and only time will tell whether or not this is significant. Um, but I feel like I want to share it um, in case it is significant. So moving on, right here we have Saturn, which I, um, I think represents um, Satan, right? The dragon. And notice, so this is forward in time. This isn't where we are right now. This is um, getting close to next spring, where this is March. Depending on where you are in the United States, it may already be spring at this point, or it's approaching spring. So... We have um, Satan, right, who is in the waters of um, Aquarius, just like the dragon spewing out the flood after the woman. The woman, I believe, is represented by Venus, who is right here behind the waters of the flood at this point. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and move forward in the story. So we have a perfect conjunction between the woman and the dragon here as if they are locked in battle and it's really interesting to me because they're locked in battle in the waters <laughs> that are being poured out um, whether that's prophetic or not I don't know but it's interesting and so now we're going to keep moving forward on the ecliptic notice that Mars is now going to be approaching and um it's going to come into conjunction with Saturn. Um, so that could represent some kind of a struggle, right, that's going on. And then moving forward, I want you to notice that Jupiter, the king planet, which I think represents um, Yehusha HaMashiach or the spirit of Christ even, it could be, um, is approaching Taurus, Taurus the bull. And remember that in Taurus, we also have Pleiades, right? The sisters, the seven sisters, which could very well be um, some kind of um, um, representation of the seven churches, right? Because churches are represented in the scriptures as women. Um, they could be represented as daughters um, or women, um, sometimes whores, depending on their uh, state of, um, of um, 
evil or good, right, that they're in at that moment. So anyway, we have the seven sisters located in the sign of Taurus. Taurus is one of the, so the bull is one of the primary symbols of Egypt. And I have read many scriptures, you can go back and look at my previous videos, about um, this place that is given the code name Egypt, where five cities are going to be created that are going to be dedicated to um, Heavenly Father, to our God, um, in the, the last days. And as a matter of fact, one of the five is going to be called the City of Our God, or the City of the Sun, or the City of Destruction, depending on which translation you're reading of Isaiah, that's Isaiah 19. And um, in my readings, I'm understanding that to be the New Jerusalem. Because yes, the earth right now is his footstool, but we know that um, according to Revelation, the book of Revelation, um, the next to the last chapter, I believe is where you read this, that um, the city, the new Jerusalem comes down adorned as a bride, right? Um, and the way that I'm understanding the scriptures, heaven and earth come together and um, the Mashiach Christ is going to rule and reign on the earth from his city, the New Jerusalem. And the New Jerusalem and the Old Jerusalem are not the same. Anyway, this is a long story that I've been fleshing out with multiple videos. So go, um, if you're interested, just go and take a look. As a matter of fact, I talk a little more about it in the very last video I did, Jacob and the Everlasting Hills. Um, definitely, let me see. Oh my goodness, I talk about it everywhere. Mount Zion, I'm sure um, I'm talking about it in there. Um, Jerusalem and Mount Zion, I'm sure I talk about it in these two videos. Anyway, I this is a major theme um, that I feel like I've been shown in um, the prophecies. And so, yeah, so you can just, you know, go back and I guarantee um, you'll see what I'm trying, or you'll see the scriptures that I use to um, support what I'm saying right now. So anyway, so you have the seven sisters, which I may very well represent the seven churches you have, Taurus. And um, I wanted to take you to the prophecy that ties Joseph to um, the bull, okay? This is the prophecy of Joseph um, for the tribe of Joseph from um, Moses right before he um, left the people right before they crossed over the river Jordan under the leadership of Joshua. So he gave a um, prophecy to each of the tribes and to of Joseph. He said, his glory is like a firstborn bull and his horns like the horns of the wild ox. Together with them, he shall push the peoples to the ends of the earth. They are the ten thousands of Ephraim, and they are the thousands of Manasseh. Okay, so this bull represents these two tribes of Joseph in the latter days. Okay, they are like a wild ox. So I do believe that because also we know that they are in a place that by code is being called Egypt, also represented by the bull, that this is what is represented in the heavens. That's why we have the bull, because it's representing specifically the tribes of Joseph and what is happening with them in the last days. We also know from the book of Hosea, there are two references that tell us, oh, I don't want to yeah, that's where I want to go. There are two references that tell us that um, he is among the Gentiles. And there is an interesting um, there is an interesting reference. We're actually going to read Isaiah 66. And there's an interesting reference in Isaiah 66 um, that um, ties this establishment of the New Jerusalem, of Zion, to the Gentiles, which remember the Gentiles is what, where we find the, where we find Joseph. He is among the Gentiles. Okay. So, um, this is talking about the establishment of Zion. See, for as soon as Zion was in labor, she gave birth to her children. Right. And of course the woman that we're talking about in, 
um, Revelation chapter 12 is giving birth, right? And as a matter of fact, it's interesting, she gives birth to a man child, but then it says at the end in verse 17, and the dragon was enraged with the woman and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring. Who And who are her offspring? Who are the offspring of the woman? Those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ, of Yehoshua Mashiach. That is, that is um, uh, the offspring of the woman, okay? Um, those that are faithful and true. So interestingly enough, let's just keep moving. So it talks about that. And then it says about Zion, behold, I will extend peace to her like a river and the glory of the Gentiles. What do they glory in? They are those that glory in Yehushua Mashiach and Jesus Christ and keep his commandments, right? And the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Then you shall feed. On her sides shall you be carried okay so the Gentiles are absolutely tied to the establishment of Zion there are more scriptures than that but that is the one that's in Isaiah 66 that we're going to look at today so I just wanted to go ahead and bring that forward while we're still looking at what's going on here all right so like I said Jupiter I believe represents if not um, Jesus Christ um, Yehoshua Mashiach corporeal, then definitely at least the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, okay? So let's just see what's about to happen. It's pretty um, interesting. Matter of fact, I think I'll just um, choose Jupiter because it moves more slowly so that hopefully things will stay in focus here. So we have the sun. Oh, and by the way, remember that it was April 4th. I'm sorry, April 8th, that we have the great eclipse that goes across the United States, right? Um, and look where the sun is located. The sun is located in um, Pisces when that occurs, all right? So let's go, the fish, right? The Those that, the, 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 the catch, right? I will make you fishers of men, right? Um, all right, so keep moving forward. So Jupiter has now fully entered into Taurus. At this point, we are still in April. And the sun is going to go into conjunction with Jupiter. But look who's right, right here on its tail, Venus. Okay, the woman fleeing into her place that has been prepared. Who prepared it? The bridegroom. Who is the bridegroom? Yehusha Mashiach, Jupiter. Okay, um, and I think that the sun coming into conjunction with Jupiter in Taurus is representing the glory of God has entered into um, into what Taurus is representing. Look. Look, the seven sisters are right here, okay? I, I find this fascinating, okay? And then here comes Venus, and Venus is actually going to come into conjunction with Jupiter and the sun. Isn't that fascinating? And then Venus continues to follow the sun and goes into perfect conjunction with the sun in the horns. And what did it just say about um about that his glory okay the sun representing the glory that is upon them right is like a firstborn bull what is the glory the glory is the glory of god it is the anointing of the holy spirit that is upon them his glory is like a firstborn bull and his horns like the horns of a wild ox together with them he shall push the peoples to the ends of the earth they are the ten thousands of ephraim they are the thousands of manasseh manasseh so um if you look um so you have one horn that's probably representing um um Manasseh and another horn that is representing Ephraim okay and is this not fascinating so here you have the woman who is 
clothed in glory, which is also what we just read, and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Like a flowing stream flowing out to all the earth, pushing the people to the ends of the earth, right? Because this place of refuge is beyond the river Euphrates. Um, there's another reference to that in the scriptures. I'm not going to look it up right now, not to make this too long, but I know it's in one of my videos. Anyway, so um, I find this interesting. Look who else is here. We have Mercury, okay? So this is like blow the trumpet in Zion, right? The messenger, okay? The, the, um, the um, wedding supper of the Lamb has occurred. The new Jerusalem has been established, okay? It is time for his people to be gathered from the four corners of the earth, to be gathered together, to become the great multitude upon the mountains, right? In the clouds. Um, actually, um, that's in Joel. Let me read that to you really quickly. Um, like the morning, I'm in Joel too, like the morning clouds, because remember, there's going to be a cloud over all of the dwellings of Zion. Uh, actually, I'll read that to you. You know, I like to make sure that we reference everything. Okay, in that day, the branch of Yahweh shall be beautiful and glorious. I'm in Isaiah 4, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and appealing for those of Israel who have escaped. What have they escaped? They've escaped the flood that has been spewed out, right? And it shall come to pass that he who is left in Zion and remains in Jerusalem will be called holy. Everyone who is recorded, whoops, among the living in Jerusalem, when Yahweh has washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, the daughters of Zion, her offspring, and purged the blood of Jerusalem from her midst by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. All right. The spirit of burning, um, the Holy Spirit, right? Um, like a fire is burning. Um, the spirit of judgment um, turning back to um, no longer doing iniquity. Now, something interesting, I I did a um, word analysis of the word iniquity, and in means not, and um, the part of the word that um, quiti, um, equity, actually comes from the um, Latin equitas, which means to be equal. So we will no longer have bond and free. People will no longer be in bondage. Everybody will be free. They will be of an equal standing. We will no longer um, differentiate between races. We will no longer differentiate. Um, in no way will, will one group of people, um, we will no longer differentiate based on wealth because everyone will be equal there won't be poor and wealthy right so we will have a spirit of judgment a spirit of, of of equality and a spirit of burning the holy spirit the anointing of the holy spirit then yahweh will create above every dwelling place look at this every dwelling place in mount zion and above her assemblies what a cloud and smoke by day and the shining whoops and the shining of a flaming fire by night for over all the what? The glory. Okay. And what did it just say in Isaiah 66? And the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Okay. So going back here, I do believe these key words are there for a reason because they help us to connect the dots um, that we otherwise would not be able to connect. Where was I? Over... Oh, I'm in Isaiah 4. Like, where to go? <laughs> For over all the glory, there will be a covering, and there will be a tabernacle for shade in the daytime from the heat, for a place of refuge, and for a shelter from storm and rain. Okay, so that is the covering that we were just reading about here. Um, I believe we were in Joel 2. I'm starting to get confused. Yeah, like the morning clouds. Okay, so there's the clouds. Okay, coming back over here, a cloud and smoke by day and a shining of a flaming fire by night over every dwelling place of Mount Zion. Mount, 
mountain. Okay, so um, yeah, so like the morning cloud spread over where the mountains, a people come great and strong, so on and so forth. Okay, so um, the story it just repeats itself throughout all the prophets. All the prophets talk about this last event that is going to occur. So anyway, that's what I wanted to show you. I thought this was pretty fascinating. Um, and I wanted to share that with you. Um, oh, there is one other thing too. So we're going to keep our eye on Venus here. Um, and I want you to see something else that I thought was interesting about Venus. And you see how Venus was sticking with the sun there for quite a while. Okay, the glory of the Gentiles. Okay, moving on. Now this is really interesting. Notice that Mercury comes um, into absolute conjunction um, with something that's going on in Cancer. Hang on a second. I was trying to blow it up and my mouse wasn't wasn't quite wor working. Okay, so first of all, I do have a video about the fact that I do not believe this is a crab. I believe it's a bee. Um, and uh, there is a video about that. Let me just find it. You decide, a crab or a bee, right here. I have done three videos about honey and the significance of honey and the honey bee in... Um, these Latter-day Revelations. So um, there they are. These are the three, if you want to go back and um, look at that a little further. But um, it's really interesting if this is a crab, which look at the double wing, just like a bee. Um, if this is a crab, then why is it that in the middle of it, you have the beehive cluster? Isn't that interesting? So, I mean, it's a bee that would have a beehive, right? Anyway, moving on, um, Mercury, remember, is a messenger. So this is almost like a message is being taken to the beehive. Um, and anyway, I hope you go back and watch the videos about honey and the bee, because like I said, there is a lot of prophecy around this. Um, now watch, watch what happens to Venus. Um, as well and honey represents a knowledge of wisdom so watch watch what happens where does the woman end up right here in the beehive right here in the beehive and I find this really fascinating because so in Jeremiah chapter 3, it talks about the backsliding children, right? The offspring. Um, it says, return. I'm in verse 14 of Jeremiah 3. O backsliding children, says Yahweh, for I am married to you. I will take you one from a city and two from a family. Okay, so there'll be two grinding at the mill and one will be taken. There'll be two in the bed and one will be taken. And I will bring you where? To Zion, to his holy hill. And I will give you shepherds according to my heart who will feed you with what? Knowledge and understanding. So honey is the knowledge of wisdom. Okay, and these shepherds are already there. They're already there waiting to feed them. And this actually, I think, is represented in the story of Asenath that I shared earlier. But um, I, I just find it fascinating that you have um, the woman, right after she flees into her place of safety, then going here um, to be taught, probably of these shepherds, the knowledge of wisdom, which is what honey represents. Now, if it's okay, I just want to explore Isaiah 66 a bit. Um, I really want to try to get through the entire book of Isaiah, maybe in just one month. I don't know if we can do it, but I'm going to try because I need to get all of Isaiah back in my head because I truly believe that all of the prophets that came after Isaiah, they already had the writings of Isaiah. He was that first major prophet. And so I do believe that they are going back and even quoting Isaiah and are just fleshing out um, in different ways some of the things that have already been represented there. So if we have Isaiah in our head, we have a foundation to work with. Um, and uh, I think the time uh, for understanding these things is getting shorter and shorter. And so I just feel this 
need to push through. Anyway, for me, and remember, this is my study, and I'm just taking you guys along for the ride, okay? I have no... I have no mantle of authority. I have, you know, I'm just bringing you along. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build me? And where is the place of my rest for all those things my hand has made? He's already made his throne and the earth right now is his footstool. Now there is going to come a time when, um, his, um, his throne is going to come down to the earth the earth will be renewed, right? We'll have a new heaven and a new earth, right? Because heaven is just simply defined as where his throne is. His throne is coming to the earth, okay? So there will be a new heaven and a new earth. What? The new heaven, the new Jerusalem, right? Um, and uh, actually, let me just read that to you real quick. Okay, then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues came to me and talked with me. I'm in Revelation chapter 21 saying, come, I will show you the bride of the, um, the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, descending out of heaven having the glory of God. And then it goes on and it talks about it, right? And you know how, um, let's see, well, let me just read a little bit. It's really interesting. Um, verse 12. Also, she had a great and high wall with how many gates? 12 gates. Because the shepherd has one flock. Everyone who follows the lamb is going to become part of Israel. Everyone will be called Israel. There is only one fold and one shepherd. It doesn't matter what you are blood wise. Everyone will be Israel and 12 angels at the gates, the names written on them, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, three gates on the west. That exactly parallels the camp of Israel. You had three tribes on the north, three tribes on the south, three tribes on the on the west, three tribes on the east. Okay, this is the camp of Israel that's being described there. Now the wall of the city had 12 foundations. Of course it did, the 12 tribes of Israel. And on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Okay, the 12 apostles of the Lamb. The, because they represent, everything's about 12. It all represents the 12 tribes of Israel. He has one fold. And he who talked with me had a gold reed to measure the city, its gates, and its walls. The city is laid out as a square. Its length is as great as its breadth. And um, he measured the city with the reed. 12,000 furlongs, its length, breadth, and height are equal. And he measured its walls. Okay, 12,000. There we are again. 12. <laughs> it's, it's all about the fact that this is Israel. This is what this is. Those who follow the lamb, wherever he goes, are going to be part of the house of Israel because he has one fold. Then he measured its walls, 144 cubits. What is 144? 12 times 12, according to the measure of a man. And anyway, it goes on. It talks about um, it's represented by 12 different um, um, stones, right? And um, going on. But I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated, right? The Lamb is its light, and the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light. And the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor into it. Its gates shall not be shut at all by day. There shall be no night there, and they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. Okay? Anyway, so his, his throne is coming down to the earth. That is what is going to happen, and the earth is going to be renewed. Okay? Um, as it was before. So let's just keep going. So all these things my hand has made, and all those 
things exist, says Yahweh. He's already created all of that. So this temple in Jerusalem, he doesn't need or want it. That third temple that they're building, it has nothing to do with his story. Okay, it is a false story, a false narrative. So, but what is he going to look upon with favor? But on this one will he look, on him who is poor and of a contrite spirit and who trembles at my word. This is why we're reading his word. We have to write his word on our hearts and in our minds. How did Yehoshua HaMashiach, what is the example that he gave us? How did he battle Satan when he went through his 40 days of fasting in the wilderness, when he was terribly hungered and Satan came and tried to tempt him? What did he use? Satan, interestingly, used the scriptures to try to twist the scriptures to tempt him. But because Yehoshua HaMashiach was filled with, he was the spirit of the living God, right? And of course, knew all of the scriptures in their purity and perfection. Then that is what he used to battle Satan. And I do believe that through the anointing of the Holy Spirit, we can understand his words. We can understand where they're being twisted and have been twisted in the past by Satan. And we can be taken across these snares and pitfalls because Yehoshua Mashiach, Jesus Christ, will not be a stumbling block to us. Not when we're full of his spirit and not when his word is in our heart. Not when we feasted upon it with a pure desire to follow him. He will preserve and keep us. So let me just keep going. He who kills a bull is as if he slays a man, right? What are they preparing to do over there in the third temple? They're going, um, or they may have already done it. I don't know. I haven't been following it. The, you know, they've been raising those red heifers so that they could do the sacrifice, right? He who kills a bull is as if he slays a man. He who sacrifices a lamb as if he breaks a dog's neck. Because what is the sacrifice he asks for of us? A broken heart and a contrite spirit. He was the ultimate sacrifice. And this is a slap in his face. He who offers a grain offering as if it offers swine's blood. He who burns incense as if he blesses an idol. Just as they have chosen their own ways and their soul delights in their abominations, so will I choose their delusions. Okay, so he's going to give them their delusions. Okay, this reminds me of Thessalonians. Um, 2 Thessalonians 2 9, the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish. Because they did not receive the love of the truth, that's why they're going to perish, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Okay, moving on. So it says right here, so I will choose their delusions and bring their fears on them. Because when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, they did not hear. But they did evil before my eyes and chose that in which I do not delight. I'm sure that's what um, Paul was quoting in Thessalonians. Um, because remember, he was an absolute expert in, in the Old Testament. He knew the prophets backward and forward, and especially he would know Isaiah. Um, so that is the problem. Understanding the New Testament is practically impossible. It is impossible without understanding the Old Testament prophets because they're quoting them constantly. Okay, um, moving on to verse 5. Hear the word of Yahweh, you who tremble at his word. Your brethren who hated you, who cast you out for my name's sake, said... Okay, so these people have been, these who tremble at his word, the ones that he will look on with favor. He says they'll be hated by their brethren and cast out by them. And those people who are casting them out says, let Yahweh be glorified that we may see your joy but they shall be ashamed. So they're thinking that th casting out these who tremble at his word is what God wants them to do. That's how they are glorifying God. 
Um, but God says they will be ashamed. Okay, because they've chosen the delusion. They've believed the lie. The sound of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, the voice of Yahweh, who fully repays his enemies. Before she was in labor, she gave birth. Okay, this is the woman in labor. This is the Revelation 12 sign. Before her pain came, she delivered a male child. That's exactly what... Um, um, in Revelation 12, she gave birth to was a male child. Let's just go there really quickly. Okay. Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet and on her head, a garland of 12 stars. 12 stars, of course. Okay. The 12 tribes of Israel. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven diadems on his heads. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven, and threw them to the earth. I am recording right next to my son who is sleeping. <laughs> and I'm sorry, he's making some weird noises in his sleep. <laughs> so, if you're hearing that, that's what's going on. He's kind of sighing in his sleep. Anyway, and the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. She bore what? A male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and her child was caught up to God and his throne. And I have, I have done video after video on who the male child is, why, how the rod of iron, where that's found in prophecy, um, what I think this catching up is. Anyway, so go back to my earlier videos so I can just keep moving. Um, so there's the male child that was born. I do believe that this is what uh, is being referred to here in Isaiah. Okay, Before she was in labor, she gave birth. I'm back in Isaiah 66. She delivered a male child who has heard such a thing, who has seen such things. Shall the earth be made to give birth in one day or shall a nation? So this is an expansion. So Hebrew does that a lot where they'll make the same statement more than once with new information and it expands our understanding. Okay. Or shall a nation be born at once? So that is another way to describe the male child that's being born. Okay. It's a nation. For as soon as Zion was in labor, she gave birth to her children. Okay, and we just read about that. So not only the male child, but also the children. And the children, according to Revelation 12, remember, um, here towards the end, um, and the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Okay, those are her children. Um for as soon as Zion was in labor, she gave birth to her children. Shall I bring to the time of birth and not cause delivery, says Yahweh. And this is a play on words. This is about delivering us from the great, also the great um, um, flood that's being spewed out of the dragon's mouth, right? Um, and it's a play on words because when you have a child, you deliver the child, right? Um, shall I, who caused delivery, shut up the womb, says Yahweh. Right? Because he didn't shut up the womb. She also gave birth to other offspring. And this is something actually I should stop and address for a moment. So there are people out there who are saying that um, the 144,000 have already been sealed and that everybody else is going to have to go through the wrath of God when it is poured out without measure. Um, um, and they're just going to have to suffer to the end at this point. Um, that's not what the scriptures say. It's absolutely not what the scriptures say. As a matter of fact, Zion, the New Jerusalem, becomes a gathering place. And people throughout the rest of the history um, of the earth until those years of wrath are over, people keep turning. And as a matter of fact, it says that, that once the New Jerusalem is established, that then um, Judah will be gathered from the four corners of the earth, wherever it's been scattered, right? And we have the two horns, which are pushing all the people to the ends of the earth. Um, so there is going to be this great harvest that is going to occur from all over the earth once the New Jerusalem is established. 
So as soon as the people repent and turn, as soon as they repent and return, they are being gathered to safety. So this idea that um, everybody else is going to perish is just not scriptural. Um, so I have a hard time with that one. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad with her, all you who love her. Rejoice for joy with her, all you who mourn for her, that you may feed and be satisfied with the consolation of her bosom, that you may drink deeply and be delighted with the abundance of her joy. I'm sorry, with the abundance of her glory. For thus says Yahweh, behold, I will extend peace to her like a river and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Okay, with the abundance of her glory, the Gentiles who have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Okay, because that is where um, the tribe of Joseph is found. This is not really the Gentiles. This is Joseph. Okay, this is Ephraim and Manasseh. And they are going to come to a knowledge of who they are. They're going to turn back to God. Okay. And they are the ones that are going to, um, they're going to assist in by helping to establish Zion. That is their job to create the safe place where their brothers then can come in. All of Israel can then be gathered in to this place of safety. And we know they're all going to be gathered to the one place first because of Jeremiah 3. And it says right here, And at that time Jerusalem, this is the new Jerusalem, shall be called the throne of Yahweh. And all the nations shall be gathered to it, to the name of Yahweh, who all the nations shall be gathered to it, to Jerusalem. No more shall they follow the dictates of their evil hearts. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of where the land of the north. Okay, so they're coming together in these mountains and and I hope you'll go back and watch the video that I did just before this one where I talk about Jacob and the everlasting hills and explain why I believe where that this is um that this is actually the United States of America and it is a second um land blessing that was given to Jacob um beyond the original land blessing that was given to um Abraham. So I hope you'll go back and watch that so that'll make more sense to you. Um, I just forgot. Oh, I'm in Jeremiah 3. I forgot where it was for a second. So it says, um, right, in those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, right, because that, that Judah is going to be gathered from the four corners of the earth, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given as an inheritance to your fathers, okay? So they're then, after they gather um, in this north country, then they're going to go back and retake the original inheritance that was given to Abraham and Isaac, the original land. So that is the, um, that is the order um, let's see. All right. So moving on with Isaiah 66. Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Then you shall feed on her sides. Shall you be carried and be dandled on her knees as one whom his mother comforts. So I will comfort you and you shall be comforted in Jerusalem. When you see this, your heart shall rejoice and your bones shall flourish like grass. The hand of Yahweh shall be known to his servants and his indignation to his enemies. For behold, Yahweh will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword, Yahweh will judge all flesh, and the slain of Yahweh shall be many. Okay, so this is what it's talking about when it talks about the grapes of, the grapes of wrath, right? These are, the, these are those to whom the wrath will be poured out. Those who sanctify themselves and purify themselves 
to go to the gardens after an idol in the midst, eating swine's flesh and the abomination in the mouse shall be consumed together, says Yahweh. And actually, I guess we should talk about these gardens. All right. Um, so let's go to Isaiah chapter 1. That's where we first see. It's one complete story, by the way. I, I hope that's clear by me going back to Isaiah 1 to talk about the garden. So <clears throat> in Isaiah 1, you have the daughter of Zion, which of course we're talking about the daughter of Zion. These are the, the daughter, a daughter is a church, all right? Or an ecclesia, a gathering of the people. Um, so these, these are those, these are those who, um, are the church, right? Like the seven churches. And when we read in the book of Revelation, we see the condition of the seven churches, that there's only one that's acceptable, right? And that is the church of Philadelphia. Everybody else has some really serious issues going on, right? So anyway, this is the daughter of Zion that we're going to be reading about. I'm going to kind of skip down to verse two. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for Yahweh has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children and they have rebelled against me okay so these are those who are professing to be following god all right and they don't even realize that they're in a state of rebellion we're gonna we're gonna see that here in a second the ox knows its owner and the donkey its master's crib okay but israel does not know my people do not consider or and some translations say, my people are, um, they don't understand, my people are insensible. All right, silly, silly minded. A last sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity. Now remember what I just told you about that word iniquity. Hang on, I'll look it up for you. So it starts with the prefix in. In means not. So that term is defined in Isaiah chapter 9. Um, starting in verse 14, so Yahweh will cut off Israel's head and tail, both palm branch and reed in a single day. The head is the elder and honorable man, and the tail is the prophet who teaches lies. Okay, so from the head to the tail. So back to um, Isaiah 1, I'm in verse 5, why should you be stricken again? You'll revolt more and more. The whole head is sick, the whole heart faints. From the sole of the foot, even to the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed up or bound up or soothed with ointment. Your country is desolate, your cities are burned with fire. Look at this. Strangers devour your land in your presence. Is that not happening? And it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. So the daughter of Zion, see I told you this is who we're talking about. This is where it defines who we're talking about, is left as a booth in a vineyard, as a hut in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Unless Yahweh Sabaot had left to us, the Lord of hosts, had left to us a very small remnant, we would have become like Sodom, we would have been like Gomorrah. That is the condition of the daughter of Zion. I'm going to move down to the bottom here, because this is where we start talking about the um, gardens, okay? Zion shall be redeemed with justice. This is what I was telling you. That iniquity, that inequality is going to be gone. So I'm going to the book of Acts really quickly to show you uh, an example of what that looks like for there to be justice among the people. So um, I will come to verse 43. Then fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. By their fruits, we will know them, that they're true servants, right? Now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their positions possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need so there was not poor and rich they were one people with no iniquity no unequalness okay they were they everyone was regarded as being of great worth and her penitence with righteousness their destruction i'm back in isaiah 1 
uh, the destruction of transgressors and of sinners shall be together, and those who forsake Yahweh shall be consumed, for they shall be ashamed of the terebinth trees which you have desired. Okay, these trees are um, our leaders, all right? Great men in the scriptures, great leaders in the scriptures are referred to as trees, high and lifted up, lofty, right? And you shall be embarrassed because of the gardens which you have chosen. Do you see that? For you shall be as a terebinth whose leaf fades and as a garden that has no water. The strong, okay, the trees shall be as tender and the work of it, of what? Of these gardens. These are, these are false churches, guys. And these are leaders who say they are of God, who say I've received a word from the Lord, for instance, right? Who are leading these people who have gathered into these gardens, but they are false, Okay. And the work of it, of the gardens and, and of these trees as a spark, both will burn together and no one shall quench them. Okay. These are the, these are the seven churches that are, all of them have iniquity, injustice within them, except for one. And that is the church of Philadelphia, the church of brotherly love where there is no iniquity i mean you cannot love your brother as yourself and yet treat them as less than you you can't do it it doesn't work right so let's see if we can finish up isaiah 66 it takes me forever i know because i'm all over the place after and okay those who sanctify themselves and purify themselves to go to the gardens after an idol in the midst eating swine's flesh and the abomination of the mouse shall be consumed together says Yahweh for I know their works and their thoughts and that's really interesting because when we read about the seven churches he says and I know your works right it shall be that I will gather all nations and tongues and they shall come and see my glory the new Jerusalem, my glory. And I will set a sign among them, and those among them who escape, I will send to the nations. Okay, so, um, hang on. Okay, I want to pause here just for a second. I will set a sign, I'm in verse 19. I will set a sign among them, and those among them who escape, I will send to the nations. All right. So remember, once the, the New Jerusalem is established, then he's going to send them out to the four corners of the earth to bring back in his dispersed people. OK. Um, and when it says, and those among them who escape, I will send to the nations. That is harking back to Isaiah four. This is why you have to know all of these scriptures so that it makes sense. Whoever, I'm in verse three, whoever remains in Zion and whoever is left in Jerusalem, okay, whoever escapes will be called holy. All in Jerusalem who were recorded among the living. When Yahweh has what? Washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and cleansed the blood stains from the heart of Jerusalem. Okay, why the daughters of Zion? That's what I just read to you in Isaiah one because they are filthy and they are covered with putrefying sores okay that is their condition these are those who remain in zion and who are left in jerusalem zion and jerusalem is the same place right this is an expansion this is parallelism we're talking about the same location it's the new jerusalem zion the new jerusalem so when you're seeing them together like this in these prophecies we're talking about the same place they're just it's expansionism so they're just using saying the same thing over to give us more understanding about what we're talking about zion the new jerusalem and who is there the daughters of zion that's who's there those churches right that are 
mostly filthy, okay? So he's got to wash them clean. He's got to clean them up. And what's left of them, according to Isaiah 1 that we just read, a very small remnant. If God had not left them a very small remnant, they would have become like unto Sodom and Gomorrah. So it's, it's, it's going to be tough, okay? Because where Zion, the New Jerusalem, is going to be located, that is about to get cleaned up. And it's, it's, it's going to be tough. Um, let's continue. But those who escape, okay, in Zion, I will send to the nations to Tarshish and Pool and Lud, who draw the bow and Tubal and Javan to the coastlands afar off, who have not heard my fame nor seen my glory. And they shall declare my glory who, where? Among the Gentiles also. Do you see that? Then they shall bring all your brethren for an offering to Yahweh out of all the nations, because they've been scattered in all the nations of the earth. Um, on horses and in chariots and in litters, on mules and on camels. To where? To my holy mountain, Jerusalem. That's what we just read in Jeremiah chapter 3. I will bring them um, one from a family and two from a city. And where will I bring them? To my holy city, to Zion, to my holy mountain. Right? That's Jeremiah 3. Actually, we'll just read it because I'm paraphrasing. And I always feel bad when I paraphrase. So let's just go back up. Um, where was that? Um, I will take you. I'm in verse 14 of 3. One from a city and two from a family. And I will bring you where? To Zion. And I will give you shepherds according to my heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. There it is. Right? And what happens with Venus right after, um, right after Venus goes through, this is really interesting. Um, God knows what he's doing. So first you have the seven, um, sisters, right? Who are here in the bowl, right? And then you have this anointing that happens of Venus in the horns, which fulfills the prophecy that we read um, in the book of Deuteronomy that Moses gave um, to Joseph. And then what happens? It goes through Gemini. Notice that in Gemini, you have one brother who has the harp, I believe that represents Judah, and the other brother who has the sickle, the harvest, right, that represents Joseph, and they are back together again. And then after that, when this gathering begins to happen, they're going to be gathered to Zion so that the shepherds can give them what? Knowledge of wisdom. Teach them true principles. And where is Venus at this point? in the beehive cluster being fed the honey okay um i don't know if those are true signs but i have to share them in case they are so that you guys are aware and um you can decide for yourselves as the holy spirit leads you um and they shall declare my glory among the gentiles then they shall bring all your brethren for an offering to yahweh out of all nations on horses and in chariots and in litters on mules and on camels to my holy mountain jerusalem my holy mountain zion okay same place says yahweh as the children of israel bring an offering in a clean vessel into the house of yahweh and i will also take some of them for priests and levites says yahweh Okay, so, um, and it, well, we'll keep going. I, I'm not going to stop there because then we could go and we can look at Malachi chapter three and all of these things. But wow, this is already long. So I'm going to move on for as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make shall remain before me. Just like I said, the new heavens and the new earth. Why? Because heaven has actually come down to earth. They have become one, right? And through the through the glory of his throne, through the heavens coming down to earth, the earth is renewed and restored, which I will make shall remain before me, says Yahweh. So shall your descendants and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, 
all flesh shall come to worship before me, says Yahweh. So true worship will be restored. Now, we need to understand that at the beginning of this, until the filth of the daughters of Zion is purged, that is one of the problems, is their worship is disgusting to God. Let's just look really quickly. I'm going back to the original um, condition, right, of the daughter of Zion, as it's described in Isaiah 1. Hear the word of Yahweh, you rulers of Sodom. Okay, this this is how he looks at us. Give ear to the law of our God, you people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices to me? Says Yahweh, I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed cattle. Now, it doesn't mean that we are actually burning rams, um, that we're actually doing these kinds of offerings. Um, the bottom line is, we're giving offerings that are unacceptable. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or goats. When you come to appear before me, who has required this from your hand to trample my courts? Bring no more futile sacrifices, incense is an abomination to me. Look at this, the new moons, the Sabbaths, and the calling of assemblies. I cannot endure, look at this, iniquity, inequality and the sacred meeting. Now, some translations say inequality in the sacred meeting. What version am I in? Okay. Um, where was I? There it was. Your new moons and your appointed feast, my soul hates. They are a trouble to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Okay, so that is the current condition, as far as God's concerned, of our worship as we start this and the cleansing begins to occur. So it's something that we really have to take some time to ponder and make sure that we become those people who are cleansed through the blood of Yahusha and through the anointing of the Holy Spirit so that we are the ones then that, and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says Yahweh. And they shall go forth and look upon the corpses of the men who have transgressed against me. Transgressed, gone beyond, gone beyond what Christ has taught. For their worm does not die, and their fire is not quenched. They shall be an abhorrence to all flesh. Okay, we're going to stop there. I was hoping to get to Isaiah 65, but as you see... I get a little too excited about all of the cross-references, um, and I apologize if I beat things a little too far, um, but his word his, is a lamp and a light to me. It's a light on my in my path, and um, has been my greatest joy, truly it has, and I just want to share that joy with others. So... Um, Yahweh bless and keep you this day.